today I'm going to be sharing with you how to make a California roll. Most people call it sushi rolls, but at the end of the day, we're not using raw fish. So <laughs> we're going to be using from the right, we have some sushi rice, which you can find at your local Asian market. And it looks just like this. And you can get whatever sushi rice of your choice. I've tried many of them. They all kind of do the same thing. And if you have people who are allergic to shellfish, the best thing to do is a imitation crab meat because even people that I've known that are allergic to shellfish can eat this without a problem and it doesn't give them an allergic reaction. But that's your discretion. You have to figure that out. I'm doing what works for me. Not sure what will work for you. But we have some cream cheese. We have some salt. And my salt looks a little weird because I have my Himalayan salt mixed with my kosher salt because I was down to the last drop of that. I have some sesame seed oil. I love the flavor of this. This makes your Asian cuisines and foods taste so good. And then I also have some cucumber that has been chopped into slices. I have a measuring cup, which I usually don't use, but for purposes of this video, to make sure that you guys see exactly what it is that you're going to need to make this. Yeah, I know. I forgot to show you the seaweed. So this is the seaweed that I'm using, and you can actually choose whatever seaweed you would like to try. Um, this one is called Sukaini, Sukaina. Um, they all are basically the same to me. I haven't seen it make a difference in my California rolls. And they just come in thin sheets like this. And the method I'm going to be using is a hand rolling because everybody does not have the sushi press or the bamboo rollers. All the items you're going to need. But the first thing first is we're going to start off with making our rice because that's the most important to make the rice exactly how it needs to be made and don't overcook it. So let's get started with the rice. A rice cooking pot here that old school. I'm going to put that on the heat and I'm going to be pouring two cups of water into this pot. So that is one cup and this is two cups. Now this what I'm getting ready to do is optional. But I love, love, love how this tastes. So I like to put some sesame oil in here. This helps the rice not stick but it also gives it that good flavor. Um, so I put my sesame oil right in the rice pot. And I would say if you had to measure this, this would be about a good teaspoon of sesame oil. And then I like to flavor my water as well. So that's why I had this actual salt. So I'm gonna put about a nice, I'll say, teaspoon, not a teaspoon, half a teaspoon, I'm sorry, of that. And then we have one cup, see that? One cup of sushi rice, and that is it. So I'm gonna put that in there. I'm gonna get my little spatula and I'm going to mix that up. And we want our stove on a medium heat, which will be between four and five. We don't want it to be too high. About, I'll say a five, let's do it a five. If you have numbers, let's say about a five. So now that this has all been incorporated, like so, I'm going to place the top on this and let that cook. And you wanna keep an eye on it because you don't want it to stick and you don't want it to um, overcook. So once that water starts to drain out, you know your rice is almost done and then we'll go to the next step of making the sushi. I want you to see how it's starting to clunk up and stick like this. Don't worry about it. Get in there and you mix it up as much as you can so that it's not sticking. And then you wanna put your top back on and cut your fire down um, lower. So now I have it at like a, between three and two um, from five, okay? So we wanna get in there and get all that rice sticking. Now we're gonna let it sit a little bit longer because sometimes you may need to add a little bit more water, but at this moment, no. You're just gonna cut it down lower and let it cook slower. And that's what it should be doing it because that keeps the steam in there so that way the actual moisture doesn't go away so fast all right so guys you want to get a spoon that's a little bit more tougher than a silicone because your, your rice should look like this this is the way I do mine it works for me I'm telling you it looks soggy it looks like it's not gonna work out let me cut this um, light down a little bit Looks like it's not gonna work out, but actually 
it is going to be perfect. Why? Because this all this sogginess stuff rinses off and then you have a nice grain of sushi rice. So what I'm basically doing is getting down to the bottom of it and making sure nothing is sticking. And I'm using a metal spoon because this pot is not non-stick or you can use a wooden spoon. So I'm getting down to the nitty gritty of it to make sure my rice is not sticking to the bottom of the pot. And then I'm going to cover it again. Now all this stuff will wash away. This light is too bright. Hold on, y'all. I need y'all to see what I'm doing. I'm not with this bright light. <laughs> so all of this stuff will wash away. This looks like porridge or grits or something. But it actually will wash away. I'm going to actually show you guys that. So here you can test it to see if it's tender. And if it's tender, then you can wash it. It's perfect. I actually added more rice because I need to do double. I just want to show you how much to do if you're just doing one serving of the sushi. So this is done. Now we're going to move on to the next step, which is the most important step because I know most of you are like, what the heck is this? Let's move on to the next step. So you want your cold water to be running and you want to get a strainer, preferably a strainer that has very small holes like this. And I'm going to show you what I do. One quick second. Hold on. Let me get this stuff. So I'm going to put most of this in here because it's easier for me to do it like this. Half and half. This would be about the amount that you would be making, but I'm, I double it so I have more. So I'm going to take it right over to the water. Use my dishes on the side and all that. They're clean. This, this is the part where you get all that crap off of your rice and it becomes sushi rice so let's let's go through that process right so you want it cold because the cold water stops the cooking process of the rice and you have to rinse this stuff really good because that starch is sticking so good to this rice so this is the main important part of getting your rice prepared for sushi and you will start to see the difference. You see how it's, how this looks? Let me get close. See how that looks? That's how you want your rice to look. Now see how this is, this is not washed, so see how it looks still soggy and gluten-y? You can see the difference between the two. We're gonna get all that off. Oh, this water is real cold. Forgot it's cold outside, so the water can come out real, real cold. But I want it cold enough so that the sticky stuff doesn't continue to create and that it washes away with the cold water. This is how you do that. And as you see, it's starting to become flakier rice without all that cook. I told y'all it's going to work. I told y'all. So that's what I'm doing. So now we don't need to do all of it. I just want to show that process and then we'll go to the next step. So let me get this away from here and show you how nice and fluffy this rice is and ready to be put in the bowl and sat in the refrigerator. Oh, just before I put this over there, you want to make sure you get as much of the water out of it as possible. So you want to shake, shake, shake. I got these strainers just for anybody who might want to know um, from, I want to say Kohl's. Kohl's or Walmart and you get like three of them this is the biggest one and I love them I strain everything with these because it's more convenient than the big fat strainers I strain everything except for like spaghetti and stuff but all smaller things I strain with this so all right let's go to the next step all right guys so here's the rice and I'm getting ready to put it in the refrigerator and y'all see see nice and fluffy and it's not gooey and nasty or whatever so that's the rice and I like to keep it in the refrigerator for uh, at least an hour. At least an hour, guys. If you're anxious to get this made, at least an hour. But I keep it in longer because the longer you keep it, the more moisture comes out of it. And it's colder and it just works so much better. So I'm going to put it in the refrigerator and we'll come back later and continue. Which, for the video, it's going to be like in a second. But <laughs> I'm going to put it in the refrigerator for a couple hours. And then I'll come back and create the actual sushi. All right, guys, so right here, I'm going to be showing you how I cut my crab meat in half and make it thinner strips. And I also cut my cucumbers in half and I cut my cream cheese in 
strips as well. You don't necessarily have to cut the actual crab meat. You can if you like to, and I do because it's easier for me to roll and get a nice tight roll. I don't like it really, really fat. So that's just the way I prefer to do it. Now I got my sushi down there, my sushi, my seaweed down there, and I'm going to layer on some rice guys the skies is the limit like you can put salmon you can put shrimp you can put chicken you can do whatever you want it is a fancy finger food that you can create for parties gatherings and get togethers or whatever the case may be you can be creative with this stuff okay um i've done it with yellow rice and chicken i've done it so many different ways so basically i'm just layering all the goodies inside of here and i'm gonna take it squish it and roll it as you see i left like a good inch on the other side it is not rocket science you just kind of leave a little lip that way you can wet it and close the actual roll as you see on the ends the rice does not stick like it's supposed to in the inside so i just kind of compact the rice in after i do a nice complete roll and that's all i'm doing nice and simple that way you'll have a nice full roll evenly all across and then after I get it to a certain point. As you see, I'm leaving that lip because that is going to assure that the roll stays closed once I wet it. So once I roll it all the way, I'm going to get some water and I'm going to wet the tip of that seaweed. And that is it, guys. It is done. Do you see how simple that is? You do not need a sushi press. You do not need a sushi roller, bamboo roller. I did get that because it helps my kids when they want to make it, but they've learned to make it by hand too. So they re we really don't even use it, but it didn't cost much. I think it was less than seven bucks on eBay, if I'm not mistaken. So you just cut your rolls. Make sure your knife is sharp. My knife is serrated and it needs to be sharpened so it was mutilating my row but make sure yours is sharp and that's all guys think about it you can take 10 bucks and buy all of the items you need for these rows and make it multiple times i know when i lived in the south there was a store called kroger's and i would pay about eight bucks just to get about 12 i think it was 12 sushi rolls in a little container and I'm paying less than that and I can make these multiple times whenever we have the craving for them for my whole family and make them for gatherings and different things like that. So definitely save your coins and that's what your girl is here for to show you how to save coins and do things without spending or breaking the bank. Now, guys, if you are new to my channel, make sure you thumbs up. Make sure you share this channel. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. This is the way I presented it to my hubby and he enjoyed. I will see you guys later, Gators.